Luxury is meant to be livable. Discover the new leather collection at Ashley with premium quality leather sofas, recliners, and more, all built to last. No matter how many spills, scuffs, or pet-related mishaps come its way, the leather collection at Ashley is made with the durability you need for the whole family. Shop the new leather collection at Ashley and find chairs starting at $499.99 and sofas at $599.99. Ashley, for the love of home. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites according to a recent Indeed survey. With Indeed, everything hiring is all in one place and it makes it so easy. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences each each day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. The more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join the more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash podcast. Just go to Indeed.com slash podcast right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Terms and conditions apply. Indeed.com slash podcast. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello, Hello, everyone, everyone in podcast listening land. I'm Karen Devaney. And I'm Ann Varner. And, and we're, we're sisters. sisters. Welcome to Sugarcoated Murder, where we'll discuss... And probably inappropriately laugh about and comment on... Yep, one of our favorite subjects. Murder. murder. Oh, and we love to bake. And why not combine our two favorite subjects? Baking and killers. With the E and E Varner. Yes, E E Varner. <laughs> yes, and I'm Karen with a D Vaney. <laughs> That's who I am. Welcome to my humble home. Oh, it looks so cute in here, Shoga. You're in your new digs, and I love digs. it. Yep, it's coming together. Coming together. Come together right, right now. now in this apartment. Hell yeah. So, what will you be cooking mm. up for us today? Well, the first thing I made for us was a little bourbon and ginger ale. And that would be the answer to my question on social media that I posted you when did. I said, what's in the cups? Yes, somebody with our same last name um, did they guess guessed it. it. Oh, of course, of course they yes, did. Yes, I love that. So... Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got a little cocktail going on because now that you've moved here. We can drink without we worrying about We can driving. have a cocktail and don't have to drive to each other's yes. homes anymore. It's just a quick trip up the elevator. Yes. Yeah. So, so that was um, nice. Then I'm, I decided to go with our cocktail. I'm going to make, um, it's kind of like a cheese straw. I've been wanting to make cheese straws, I but I don't have straw. the cookie press that you need to yeah. make cheese straws. Yeah. So, I am making a butter cheese wafer. I like that first word. I know. Butter <laughs> cheese wafer. And it's I got love... a surprise ingredient that's not necessarily <gasps> expected. Oh, I love a, a surprise, yes. too. My goodness. So, this is basically butter. A I stick of butter. It. Mm, got my name on it. A cup of cheese. I like it. A cup of flour. Okay. Um, a pinch of salt, a dash of tabac- Tabasco. And a cup of Rice Krispies. Oh, I like a Rice Krispies. Right? That's unexpected. But now I know where it gets the little yes. crispy from. And I actually, I think it might have been two cups. Whatever. You can anyway, post the recipe and at another I, time. Um, I grated my cheese. I didn't use the already shredded cheese because um, this has to, you have to mix your butter and your cheese together and let it get real soft mm-hmm. in order for it to mix with the other ingredients. Okay. And I find that it's really hard to get already shredded cheese soft. I because agree it's because they, the, the, they have know, the potato, potato starch, starch in it to make it, it not go soft. Right. So it doesn't get clumpy in right. the bag. Right. And for this type of recipe, I think fresh grated cheese. I think there's nothing better. Has better taste. I agree. So I mean, I, that's you why I prefer when I make pimento it. cheese. I prefer to grate my own yeah. cheese. Yeah. 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 It just it I don't has know. a better it flavor better. and it has a better consistency. Right. 
So you mix all that together, you roll it into balls, like a golf size or a ping pong ball size, if you don't like golf. I don't. And then you flatten them out like and you bake them on your ungreased cookie sheet for nice. maybe like 15 minutes. And then bam, you've got yourself a little a little butter cheese wafer to serve with your bourbon. I am so flipping excited. <laughs> I love these. And we need to give credit where that recipe came yes, from because she is such our, a dear friend. She's our second mom. Yes. She is from Franklin. Her name is Betsy. You'll notice that I have a, a crock that holds all of my cooking spoon, and it says Betsy's Kitchen. And it did come from Betsy's Kitchen. She did give that to me. Yes. And, um, yes, we we appreciate it. She will never hear this. No, I, probably not. But somebody that knows her might hear it and may well. say, oh, my gosh, my out, so the... The, the girls, the girls, <laughs> the yeah. girls gave you a head nod or a, a shout out in the podcast. And Absolutely. then they'll be like, what's a podcast? And yeah. then there's like going to be a whole nother conversation. But <laughs> what a great reason to catch up. Exactly. But we do love her to pieces. Yes. She and her husband are have been so good to our family and to us in particular. So um, yeah, this husband, recipe is going to be near. Biggie. Biggie. And this, is, <laughs> this recipe will be near and dear to our hearts because we'll think of her while we're eating them because she usually serves things at her cocktail yes, hour at her does. house. She does indeed, and we so appreciate her. Yes. So that's what's happening in my new kitchen. What's that's going on great. with you? Are you going to talk about murder? I'm going to talk about murder, but first I have breaking news. <gasps> breaking news? Yes. Dun, 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 dun. Um, we, our web page is up and running. Yes. That's so exciting. That so, happened while I was moving. So thank yes. you for that. Thank you, Wizards. <laughs> it just happened. Um, <laughs> it just happened. So the website name, I'm going to get it out of my mouth in a minute. Take another sip of bourbon. I think I shall <laughs> make, make my tongue go a little smoother. <laughs> I will say we are having bourbon and ginger ale, if I didn't make that clear. That's true. That we is. are having bourbon and ginger, but I will tell you that you put a lot more ginger ale in your bourbon than I do, but well, it's good. Well, I measured it this time, which is not something that I normally do. That's fine. Um, but there is plenty of bourbon here if you'd like to I add understand. I brought it. I brought it from my house, so I know exactly how much is in it. <laughs> Anyway, um, the po the website is sugarcoatedpod.com, and right. you will find it. And the nice thing is you can listen to all the episodes straight from that website if you are a computer-driven person and you don't really do apps and all that kind of stuff. You can get on your laptop or your computer and uh, or your Commodore 64. I don't know what people use. <laughs> and, um, and then you can find our website, and you can listen straight from there. And How convenient. Our email has not changed, which is murder.sugarcoated. At gmail.com. That's exactly right. And we still are on social media, and um, we're on the Instagram at Sugarcoated Murder. And we have a Sugarcoated Murder podcast Facebook page and a fan page, our fan group on Facebook. So please be sure and track us down. Yes. And and give us a holler and be join the group or just follow oh, us on one oh, of the social media outlets. It's always good to hear from people. You can email us and ask us for any recipe. Yes. And we will ha and will happily share it with you. Yes. She's our recipe corner queen. She is. She is so, indeed. So there's one other thing that I wanted to bring up. A I while know. back, oh. I covered a murder in Ireland that you'll remember because the name of the, I covered two different murders in Ireland both of them in Dublin right the first one that I did was about the scissor sisters yes. if you will remember I do. and the mom and the two sisters all went to jail for all different periods of time for their participation in the murder of a man yes. that had been living with them dismembered and they him. dismembered yes. him yes, yes. so did his head around in a, in a, a bag in a, a days. duffel bag and they went shopping with yes them. Mm -hmm. they yes. sure did and then moved it a couple of times making sure yeah. you didn't miss out on any yeah. fun and they they his somebody found his leg with his, with sock. his sock still on yeah, floating down the river and some dude recognized the sock as one of his <laughs> friends so that's how they identified him but they eventually got most of his parts back not all of them anyway um so I covered that murder, yes. and then a while later, I covered another murder in Dublin about a lady who, um, at Jack White's Inn, yes. she murdered her husband and went to jail for that. She so, had, she's the one that showed up in all the jewelry. And yes, it all became clothes. part of what she was wearing, and at her trial, the judge put a gag order on the press and said they could not talk about what she was wearing to court because that had become center stage and the coverage. Oh, right. What That's was the right. style. 
Trout has not yet um, acclimated to this house. He's no. very conflicted about the amount of wood floor yes. that's in this apartment compared yes. to his last apartment. So he's probably going to cry through the whole thing, and we're just going to give him a pass this time. But next time, I'm going to expect better from him. Yeah. All right. So anyway, then, so you've got these two murders. Okay. So the, the mother of the two girls. Right. She got out of jail first. Okay. Okay. And she got really upset because Catherine Scully, who's the other lady that, that killed her husband. Right. And one of this lady's daughters were in the same prison together. Oh. And oh, she the scissor wrote sisters her, and the, the one oh, scissor wow. sister. Because one of them already got out. And there's the one that's still in there. She's going to be in there a long time because she's, while she's, whilst in prison, she, yeah, she has, gotten into some trouble. has gotten into some yeah, other trouble. Yeah, yeah. So, she, this lady befriended this daughter and the mother of the daughter has written letters oh. to the Catherine saying, please stop trying to steal my daughter from oh, me. Oh no. Now this is right before this mother of the scissor sisters passed away. She has passed away oh. from cancer, but right oh. before she was very upset that Catherine Scully oh, was taking no. her daughter away from her. Oh yeah. So there, there go the lives of the women prisoners of wow. Dublin, Ireland. Wow. Crazy that those two <laughs> murdered, murderers yeah. would be connected in that way. Exactly. I thought that was really interesting. That this is whole breaking article. news. That is breaking news. I thought so too. So anyway, yes, I have a murder. And this time I've gone back across the pond All right. because I need a vacay. And um, I have a childhood friend that I went to school with that I grew up with. And she was from straight from Italy. Her family was from Italy. She, they spoke only Italian in her home growing up. She yes, I was a when she got fascinating here person. That you taught her some. Very well, bad not words. only me. I'm not going to say it was only me. I'm going to say there were some people that taught her <laughs> all the juicy cuss words and gave her the wrong meanings of them. So when we would go out for PE at school and she would screw something up, like kick a ball and it would go foul, she would. Yell the, the bad word. F word, right. thinking that meant foul instead of the F word. And I mean, we got in a little bit of trouble for it, but not that much. <laughs> so, anyway, but um, she actually still lives here in the States and her family is from Franklin. She doesn't live there anymore. So, this is for you, Letty. This is for you, baby. All right, here we go. Okay, so we're in Italy. <laughs> yes. okay. okay, so um, there's this 13 year old girl named Yara. And now, we're in Italy where I may not be able to pronounce the names correctly. Right. I'm going to give it my best shot, and I just want to say this disclaimer up front. I am in no way trying to make fun of anybody's name, but I will screw it up because that's how American I am. Yeah. And I'm sure it will come out as Southern Italian. Yes, like so, my Southern Irish. Yes. yes, So, and we'll do my best, though. So this little girl, she's 13 years old. Her name is Yara. Gambi Rossio. Okay. Gamba Rossio. Gamba Rossio. Yes. Gamba Rossio. And it's November of 2010. She's from a little town called Brambata di Sopra. That's where it is. That's what it is. All right. It's also known as the Bergamask Island. Oh. It's an hour north of Milan. I can get that one. Population about 8,000. Sounds familiar. Yeah. And the townspeople there are considered standoffish, quiet, private, very proud and humble. Oh. Yeah. So Yara is into gymnastics big time and oh. she is preparing for a gymnastics recital. Right. So she has to, on November 26th, she tells her mom, I need to run my stereo over to the gym to drop it off with my instructor. Right. Which because tomorrow's would never performance these days, right? right? So my performance is gonna I need it for my performance and we're gonna go set it up. Right. So her mom said that's not a problem. The gym that she was going to um, was in a was part of a large sports complex. Mm -hmm. So she was meeting up her instructor, handing it off, and then was planning to return home shortly after. All right. It was less than a quarter of a mile down the road. So oh, quick walk. Lord. That's always trouble. I know. Bad things happen within two miles of your home. Yes. So she left at 5.15 p.m. and her mother expected to see her home pretty quickly after that. Yeah. By 7 o'clock, Yara was not home and her parents began to worry. Yeah. So around 7.11 that evening, her mom calls Yara's phone and it goes straight to voicemail, indicating that her, voice, that her phone was off. 
which was very rare for Yara. Of course, a 13-year-old girl is going to always have that cell phone charge because right. they get in touch with their friends. Sure. 20 minutes later, Yara's father decides it's time to call the police. Yeah. Why so, wait, right? Why wait? Let's do it. I, get I right agree. On it. Let's get on it. Let's don't wait another second. That call landed on the desk of Magistrate Letizia Ruggieri. Oh, look at that. Yes. And she was a tough former policewoman. She had been a magistrate for about 15 years. I don't think we have magistrates here unless you we would do. consider it. But it's not the same. The magistrate, I think, over there is more of a judge, right? The um, that's, it's here. the next step to a judge, but they can, their work, they work out of the prosecutor's office. Yeah. And we have that here. I know we have that here, but the, they're very involved in the police work. Right. That's the difference. Is our magistrates don't head up investigations. So um, anyway, it, it, so she takes the call and she um, acts very quickly, which is good news. Yeah. She dispatches both the state police and the military police. Wow. Yes. And she also dispatches um, tracking dogs. Wow. Yeah, she's on it. Lickety split, girl. You go. So they TCA. check in with Yara's gymnastics instructor who confirmed that Yara had been at the gym earlier. And she said she that Yara had stayed and done a light workout and the instructor left. And Yara was still there. So the police also established the last known contact with Yara was a text to her friend Martina. Oh. And that was at 6.44 p.m. And they were making plans to meet up the next day at 8 a.m. So I don't think we have a runaway case. Right. So they got the tracking dogs out and they were able to pick up Yara's scent. And they took off in the opposite direction of how Yara would usually go back home. And they headed towards a small hamlet called... Mapolo. Okay. Or Mapolo. I'm going with Mapolo because it sounds more Italian. Say it in an Italian accent. Mapolo. There you go. Okay. That's the place. So, police were able to discover that at 6.49 p.m., Yara's cell phone pinged in Mapolo in this little town. Oh. So, and after that, I think it went dead. So, anyway, um, oh, as usual... Investigators turn towards Yara's family first. Right. They have to be officially cleared. So they question the family members and they dug for signs of discourse. Yara's parents were well respected in the community. Her father, Fulvio, Fulvio, Fulvio was an architect and her mother, Mara, was a teacher in a nearby town. They had a strong marriage and four children. Yara had an older sister, and then it was Yara, and then two younger brothers under the age of 10. Nothing seemed amiss with Yara's family, so they were cleared. So now, Rugeri, or Rugeri, Rugeri. <laughs> turned to technology. She put wiretaps on hundreds of phones. Really? In Italy, you can do that. I wow. think it takes a lot more in this country to do that. Yeah. But yes, she was able to not wire only that, down. but I mean, she's not even a day into it. No. Mm-mm. By this, we would just be getting started. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, we'd, we'd still be meeting and going over, you know, what can we do and what can't we do? Right. And can we find a judge to sign off on anything that we want to do? So, anyway, they tried tracking any phones moving in and out of the area over the period just before Yara left home and after she went missing. That was over 15,000 phones. Wow. Yeah, moving around. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. And how do they track that? I don't know. They've got the technology over there to do it. Wow. I'm sure we have it here, but we don't use it. It takes a lot of manpower. Right. Right? Yeah, it does. So one man is overheard on his phone in late November saying, forgive me, God, I didn't kill her. Oh. This man's name was um, Fickery. 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 F-I-K-R-I. Okay. He worked in a builder's yard. Like in Fickery. Dickery. Okay. Fickery. Dickery. No, it's not Ori. It's Re. Fickery. Fickery. Okay. He worked in a builder's yard in Mapolo. Mapolo. Mapello. Whatever that place is. The M word. Oh, no. No. Not the M. It's my. Uh, okay. I'm moving on. By the time he started. <laughs> what just happened? I don't know. Okay. By the time police started piecing his info together, he had left on a boat for Tangiers. Oh, dear. 
So police went and got him, brought him back, investigating him, investigated him, and he was eventually cleared and let go. But there was public outcry against Ruggieri for setting him free. Mm. But Ruggieri knew because he was a foreigner, people were very comfortable with saying he was guilty. Right. So still, where was Yara? We right. still don't know where Yara is. Right. So um, as winter settles in, oh, there's no. still no Yara. So oh. national news crews have started um, camping out in front of Yara's house and following family members. The Gambriasio family was horrified to be forced into the public eye, and they begged for privacy and respect. Right. The family um, huddled in their home. They kept their shades pulled down. They kept their lights off and minimal movement in the home. My gosh, They're that is They're prisoners terrible. in their own home. Yes. In the meantime, hundreds, hundreds of townspeople are out searching on foot for little Yara. Right. So, um, the townspeople even offered to hold a candle, candlelight vigil for Yara, but the family asked them not to. And instead, they invited the nuns from Yara school to come and pray with the family, which they did every nice. day. Very nice. Yes. So, the investigation continues. There's very little gossip in the town um, out of respect for Yara and her family. They wanted to respect their dig- dignity and privacy, and that's the kind of town it was very, like I said, standoffish. They didn't get into anybody's business. They right. didn't they like to themselves. gossip. Yeah, there right. was just a very high level air of respect for each other. Right, nice. Yes, so her parents finally made a television appeal and shared some pictures of Yara on, on the news. And Mara was so uncomfortable, she didn't even speak. Right. And all Fulvio did was he pleaded for privacy and respect and said that they would not be giving any interviews. Okay. Okay. All right. Time passes. Just saying, I got a red flag. All right. You and your flags stay over there. Okay. Still no Yara. Some townspeople had begun to talk of witches that stole and poisoned children in the night. Oh, my. And maybe that's what had happened to Yara. Of course. Yes. So. Then, on the afternoon of February 26, 2011, three months after Yara had disappeared, a middle-aged man was out flying his remote-controlled airplane in town about six miles south of Yara's hometown and stumbled upon the body of Yara. Oh, oh no. She was very decomposed, but they recognized her black bomber jacket and her Hello Kitty sweatshirt. Mm. And with her body was her iPod, her house keys as well as the SIM card and battery to her cell phone, but no cell phone. Oh, okay. That's odd, isn't it? It is odd. Yeah. It's like they just dumped her there and, like, dumped all her stuff. Except for her phone. Right. They They took the time to take the SIM card and the battery out. But took the phone with them? Why not take is the SIM card Is that a souvenir, card maybe? Right. Maybe it's a souvenir. I don't know. The SIM card is what's going to track your location. But they left the SIM card behind? With her body. So, oh, I understand. Yeah, they so they it, took they off. They might track. Okay. Yeah. The autopsy was conducted by Italy's most famous forensic pathologist. Her name was Professor Christina. Christina Yang. Well, let's go with from that. Gray's, from Gray's Anatomy. Was I think it it's... Katera. Okay. I think it's Katera, but I'm going to say Christina Yang from um, Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. The pathologist discovered traces of lime, the powder, not the fruit. Oh, 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 oh decompose. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Yara's respiratory passages. What? And the presence of a jute rope on her clothing. Oh, what is a jute rope? Well, it's a rope that's made from a like from. Um, is it that plastic? straw? That, oh. No, it's real strawy. Oh, it's okay. the kind that you put down that it's real prickly when you feel it. Right, it's right. real rough. Okay. Like a builder or a contractor would have that like around a pallet or something. Okay. What we put down if you don't want snakes to cross. Yeah. Because then it keep, the snakes don't like the feel of it. Yeah. Okay. Just in case you didn't know. All right. Um, Yara had not been raped. Oh, that's good news. Her bra was unhooked. And there was male DNA on her phone, battery, and on her leggings. Huh. There had been a struggle. Right. That's probably when a bra came unhooked. Probably. 
she um, she had a head injury that was similar to somebody hitting their head on or being hit with a stone. Oh, no. But it wasn't fatal. Okay. There were also seven small stab wounds, oh, like from lightly stabbing. Oh. None of them were fatal. Yara had died by freezing to death. Are you kidding me? No, she had been left out in the elements. So this jackass is... Killed her, thinks he's killed her, but left her. Left her, and she's, she's still alive, which is why she's got the lime in her respiratory system because she's probably breathing it in. Yeah. Yeah. So. Man. Yeah. So, um, there was a, because there was a struggle, and Yara had obviously fought with her attacker, his blood was transferred to the battery of her cell phone. So he must have had blood on him when he took the battery out. Good. Of course, there are no matches found to the DNA of what police have on file. Of course, because this wouldn't be a juicy story. So, um, the suspect got a nickname called Ignoto One, which wow. means unknown oh, number one. All right. So, the workload of searching for Ignoto One was daunting, and Ruggeri was constantly criticized because it was taking so long. So, first... She said the state police would be assigned to getting DNA samples from all of Yara's relatives that they could find, her school friends, people at the gym, random town people, whoever she would have come in contact with. Right. And then the military police are assigned to the phone records. They cross-reference all mobile phones that showed movement from Yara's town to the town where she was found. And I'm going to tell you, that town is called... Chignolo de Solon. Oh. That's all I'm saying. That sounds exactly right. Yeah, I'm sure it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, sorry to all you people that live there. I really, I love you and your culture, but I, I can't pronounce crap. So anyway, they cross-reference it from her hometown, anybody that shows up in her hometown and the town where she was found. Right. So they're cross-referencing all this crap. Any Anywhere or any phone that appears in both places, they track that phone owner down and they get DNA samples. Oh, wow. Like, they are working their They're asses doing it. off. Yeah. So, and like, here in the States, you'd need a search warrant. And, and you have to tell them why you're getting the DNA sample. It can't just be we're randomly sampling, you know, right. all of Italy. Right, right. No. No. Wow. So, they um, employ DNA labs from three cities. Mm. Because they had so much DNA coming in. Wow. Yes. And so between the manpower and the machinery that was used, this became the most expensive investigation and manhunt in Italian history. Wow. Wow. Yes. Wow. All for this little girl from this little small town. Yeah. Yeah. North of Milan. Yara's family was finally able to lay her to rest in May of 2011. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was late May. There were onlo onlookers that lined the streets of the city and applauded as her white casket adorned with white flowers made its way down the streets. It was a big deal. Yeah. The ceremony was held at the sports complex where her gym was, and um, a large screen was brought in for the overflow crowd to watch from outside. Aww. The president of the republic, whose name I won't even e attempt the first don't, syllable, don't, yeah. he don't was there, that. he attended, and he even gave an address there he spoke at her funeral oh sorry i'm not used to this timer thing oh uh, that's okay okay continue he spoke at her funeral that is so sweet it's very special so thousands of dna samples were tested and still no match it's like this guy just disappeared wow so regary started reaching and thinking out of the box and getting creative so she even ends up going to a nightclub near where the body was found this nightclub is known for its tough criminal element. Oh. Yep. There had actually been two murders there in the past. Right. So on Friday and Saturday nights, she and her team would stand and take DNA swabs of everybody coming and going. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, they just were, they were, I mean, needle on a haystack. Yeah. So, stroke of luck, one sample from the nightclub was very similar, not an exact match, but very similar to the one found on Yara's body. Wow. So um, they know that it's a relative. They go through and start searching um, databases. A relative and, of the killer. A relative of the killer. Okay. Sorry, I sh you're right. Yes, the relative of a killer. Uh, 
a relative of the killer. Gotcha. I almost changed that whole situation around. The relative of a killer. killer. That's so random. <laughs> they find this name, Damia, Damiano. Damiano. Damiano Okay. Garanoni. So now I think you're nailing it on Damiano. The that makes Damiano. Complete sense. I know. So he was excluded as a possible suspect because he was able to prove that he was in South Africa the day Yara went missing. The geneticists were certain that he was a close relative of the killer. Yeah, so who but, are your people doing? And he's like, oh, no, no, I don't know new killers. Yeah, I just but, know my peeps, and they're not killers. Well, let's see. So Rigari, I'm really getting into her name, Rigari. Rigari. Rigari and her team start looking at Damiano's family. And yes. get this. Oh, no. Damiano's mother okay. had worked 10 years ago as domestic help in Yara's home. No way. Not kidding. No way. That's crazy. Oh, no. So his mother, Aurora Zani, Aurora, Aurora Zani, <laughs> had lived nearby and had worked in Yara's home two days a week throughout Yara's childhood. Wow. Rigari was convinced that this had to be just a coincidence. There what? was no way that it was that it was going to lead them to a killer. And oh she God. just said, "This is this can, this is crazy. It cannot be. It cannot be." So in 2011, Aurora was no longer working for Yara's family, but she had maintained an excellent relationship with Fulvia and Mara, right. Yara's parents. Right, right. Eventually, that angle went nowhere. They oh. got nowhere with it, and they dropped it. Really? They dropped it. Yes. So now it's been a year since Yara disappeared. Criticism of Rigari is intense. She's constantly having to defend herself in, in the, and her team in the public. Even politicians were calling her incompetent and tried to have her removed from the case. Right. The public was also losing faith that a female could ever solve this case. Oh, Lord. It was way too complex for a woman, oh. and they needed a man to head up the oh, investigation. No. So she's really getting it from all sides. She needs to get on the ball. So in the meantime, she's focused in on the two connected DNA samples that the team built, or the two DNA samples right. that she has. Right, right. Okay? And now they're going to try to use genealog genealogical family tree mapping. Yeah, I mean, I know she wasn't doing this back then, but she, she really needed the genetic she needed, detective She on needed there. CC Moore. They were able to map the family tree all the way back to 1815. Wow! Yes, and the family tree concentrated on in this little village called Gorno. It's, 40, it's a 45 minute drive from Yara's hometown. It's a remote village. It's it's filled with farms and farmers with smoke houses and chickens and undeveloped woodlands around. And it's a village of 1,600 people. Oh, little That's tiny. That's little tiny. Mm hmm. So remember how I talked about Yara's family, where they were from? The, pe the town people were known to be private, respectful. Yes. Dignified, kind of standoffish. I do remember that. Okay, well, this town had a whole different reputation. Uh oh. They had a reputation for being hotheads. Uh oh. And for promiscuity. Oh. Dear 1,600 me. people. Whoa. <laughs> I think they might have like fallen into a swingers village. Oh, Lord. I know. So, um, Damiano's father had a brother named Giuseppe. Giuseppe. I know, I love these names. Giuseppe died in 1999. Okay. But they were able to find his widow. All right. She was able to find two stamps that Giuseppe would have licked before his death at some oh, point. No way. I'm not kidding. And his DNA was gotten off of there, and he came back as the father of Ignoto One. <gasps> Can you believe that? Oh my God. What are the chances? That's Thing. Giuseppe. Oh, Lord, Giuseppe. So, um, so they continue to work on the family tree, okay? And they suspected that Ignoto was an illegitimate child of Giuseppe and an unknown female. Uh-oh. Yeah, promiscuity. Oh, no. Um, so now they're searching for a female who's had an affair with a married man who's now dead, but their son was Yara's killer. Like, All right. Now it's even more of a needle in a haystack. Holy so crap. complicated. So the village was not very welcoming. 
They weren't cooperative. They didn't like these outsiders that were there to stir up trouble and accuse their residents of illegitimate children. <laughs> because it turns out that in the early 1960s onward in Giuseppe's life, he used to travel for two weeks to a spa resort south of Milan without his wife. Uh-oh. What is a married man with children doing vacationing at a spa resort for two weeks on his own? Honey, it's business. It's just business. I don't think it's business. I think it's biz ass. <laughs> He's getting some biz ass. Yes. So, Regari's team poured over records from this spa resort of females that were there anytime Giuseppe was there. They were looking for single women, orphan children. They're looking for everything. And then they realized it's probably a married woman who posed past this child as her husband's child right. and, was, and never told anyone. Oh, gosh. So. Here we go. Yes. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, my gosh. So, in the meantime the more definitive DNA testing was done on Giuseppe's DNA mm -hmm. and they are 100% certain he is the father of Ignoto. Oh gosh. So who is Ignoto? This information leaked out to the public and now people knew of the tawdriness of the situation. Oh Lord. It was quite scandalous <laughs> and especially because divorce was illegal in Italy until 1970. Wow. Can you imagine? No. Holy moly. No. Holy no, no. marriage hell. No, 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 So long forgotten infidelities and old suspicions surfaced. They were able to identify five illegitimate children in oh. just two small villages. <laughs> <laughs> it is like a hot bed of scandal. Oh, it's Lord. worse than a soap opera. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> And people are pissed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All of their dirty laundry is being aired. Oh, oh my God, gosh. they're so pissed. <laughs> so they figure out, well, figure first of all, Regari has this right-hand man name. His name is Marshall. Marshall is like his title. Giovanni. Oh, I was Masser like, Marshall. No, Marshall Giovanni Maserano. I like that. I like that, Maserano. He was stubborn and relentless, and he wasn't going to let this go. And he had not had... A holiday or a vacation since he started oh. on this case. He was determined that he would not take a vacation until Yara's killer was found. Wow. So he finds out that Giuseppe was a public bus driver in Ponta Selva, which was a nearby <laughs> town. Yeah, Giuseppe, I don't know how you got know, this spot. Oh my God. Made. And one of his fellow co workers actually told them that Giuseppe had told him he had gotten a girl in trouble. Oh. Giuseppe. Giuseppe. But he wouldn't give up the girl's name. Oh. So now they're leaning on the the co-worker saying, listen, we're Still trying to find a killer. Pizza. He finally says the name of the girl was Esther Arzufi. Oh. So she had been a neighbor of Giuseppe's in the mm -hmm. 1960s, and she was married to some rough and tumbly dude named Gianni Bassetti. Oh, really? So they get a DNA sample from Esther. Okay. Bingo. Bingo, bingo, bongo. Esther is the mother of Ignoto One. That mother little killer. fuzzy. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my gosh. So Esther Esther gave birth to Giuseppe's child in 1970. Oh wait, not child, children. Twins. She had a boy and a girl. Are you kidding? The boy's name? Sugar, hold on to your girdle. I don't know if I can do it. Massimo Bassetti. Massimo! <laughs> Massimo! Oh, I love Massimo. <laughs> Middle name, Giuseppe. Nice. <laughs> she had never told anyone the child was not her husband's. Oh. Now God. she is on the front burner. Yeah. She, I mean, talk about scandal. You, you kept this a secret. Your Esther, husband. Not only <laughs> have you birthed an illegitimate child. But you birthed a killer, damn it. She birthed illegitimate twins. Twins. And so Massimo. Oh, can you imagine when she found out? She would have been she like, She was like, what? Uh, she still the says hell? to this day, I was faithful to my husband. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, okay. Well, these children were immaculate conception. <laughs> so Massimo is known as the animal to all of his friends because of his, because of his partying ways. Oh, Jesus. At this point, he's 42 years old and works as a builder. Okay. He's married with three children, and he lives in a little hamlet in Napolo. 
which is exactly where those dogs tracked Yara. Remember I said yeah. they tracked her to a hamlet, and that was the last place that her phone had pinged? Yeah. He lives right there. Damn it. Asshole. The dogs knew it. They knew oh, it the whole time. Oh, They're like, hello, They're sitting rough. around saying, hey. Yeah. We took, we, like, well, if y'all, aren't gonna, if y'all aren't going to follow our direction, we're just going to sit around and lick our balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, in June of 2000, June 15, 2014, Rugeri set up a fake roadblock around Mapolo. Oh. So, it's like a sobriety checkpoint. Right. Okay. So, they set that up, and they're just stopping every car that comes and goes in that town. Yeah. And eventually, Massimo stops. Hello, we're looking for Massimo Animal. And they pretend that the machine is broken. Oh. And they get him to blow twice on two separate straws. So now they have two really good DNA samples of Massimo. Oh, very smart. Yes. They hit pay dirt. So the chance of it not being Massimo is two to the... to, to. 10 to the 27th power. So if you write the number 10 and write 27 zeros behind I'm really, it. I mean, I don't feel like it. Well, I, it, I my shoulder hurts I'm not from writing it. so I'm much. So that's why right I just now. said 2 times 10 to the 27 because <laughs> that's what I learned so, in school. So, hit him. He did it. He so did it. So on June 16th, they arrested him and charged him with Yara's kidnapping and murder. No, I mean, what was he doing there? Oh, and I forgot to tell you, it also turned out that Esther... Her third child, with um, her husband, was also an illegitimate child. Not Giuseppe's, but somebody else's. Giuseppe. Giuseppe had no children? No, no, no. Oh, he had two children. He no. thought he had five. He has children. Giuseppe was married with three children. Okay. Then he had illegitimate twins. Oh, right. that yeah, he, but he never right. knew about them. Right. <laughs> he didn't know about those. And yeah. then Esther's poor husband became famous for being the fool right. that everybody oh. knew him as the guy who not only had she born him twins that were not his but then another child of theirs was not them oh my god so five children three of them were not his oh my god he was the laughing stock yeah and i think that he i mean i just think i mean i don't know i'm not going to say what i think he should have done to esther so what the heck was massimo doing close to poor yara well, I'm going to tell you. So, um, they arrest him and charge him with kidnapping and murder, right? Right. They start doing their searches. They find his computer, take it out of the home, and it shows that he has a compulsion for pubescent young girls. Great. And after more research, it showed that Bassetti frequently hung out around Yara's house. What? He was at the nearby pizza restaurant. He often ate in his car behind, parked behind her gym. What? He took, I like this. He took UV showers at a close by tanning salon. <laughs> oh, UV a showers. A UV shower. Wow. I don't, I don't know. I don't. I guess that's a tanning booth to us because you stand up in it. Oh, right, right. So it's a UV shower. Okay. Anyway, and his phone showed him as being present in Yara's town the night she went missing. Oh, my gosh. Now, Regari is a hero. Yeah. Because she solved it. Giovanni Bassetti, I told you this, is now famous for being the poor dude who was fooled not once but twice right. by his wife. And then um, two people then came forward to say that they had had affairs with Massimo's wife. And that, so the defense was building this portrayal of him as this family man, and that just crumbled. Right. Because they're like, uh, no, he's not. We've been having affairs with his wife. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, this whole town, they can't keep their britches on. They can't. They just can't. So, meanwhile, Yara's family remains very private. They have no date on her tombstone, but you can often see um, trinkets that her friends take by and leave on her grave. And her father is there almost every morning at her grave visiting her. It's very sad. And Massimo, in 2016, is is convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Okay. So, that's my murder. Wow. That was a, that was a soap opera. Uh, I oh, mean, if, it were, if this were not in Italy, I would think it was like a novella. I know. Um, what's Tele- it called? Telenovela. A telenovela, yes. Because, and maybe there's such a thing in Italy that I don't know about. I'm sure there is. But I just thought this was fascinating because they did the DNA thing, but they really had to work at that DNA. Right. I mean, it really, it, you talk about needle and haystack. So I mean, anyway, I thought it was fascinating and rest in peace, Yara, because your killer was found. And in the meantime, a whole lot of people got embarrassed about their shenanigans, which well, is Irish. 
I don't know what the Italian word for shenanigans is. I don't either, but one day I'll find out. Yeah. So wow, anyway. that was really good. Good job. Thank you, Shoga. I appreciate it. I really liked it. Mm -hmm. So tell me how the cheese crackers are going because I could use a little something, something with They're the They're going great. The second batch is in. It's got five minutes left, and then it's done. It smells real cheesy in here. Yeah, like a like a like a bed of cheddar. Yeah, know? yeah. It's not overly cheesy. Yeah. Because I don't like too much cheese no. in the cheese. Mm -hmm. No. All right, well, you need to, um, should so, we just take a quick break? Let's take a break, and I'll do my murder. All right, we'll get you set up. Please hold. We're back, Shogun. We're Shogo. back, and we're back. And we're back. we're back. Yes. We're back in black. Well, is that the name of the song? Yes. Okay. Yes. All but right. that's not what we are. Okay. That's not what we are. I love that you're wearing, you're wearing the hell is Franklin, Virginia shirt. Yes, ma'am, girl, I'm representing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That was always a fun shirt. I know. I need another one because this one's got holes in it and ink on it. And mm. Yeah. I'm going to have to get me some moat. I know where to get them. I know. Me too. And I also need another Grayson and Emma shirt. Or the ones that we got from Grayson and Emma. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cool. Good times. Good times. Good times. All right. Let's hear about your moita. All right. I'm going to talk to you about my murder. My moita. I'm excited. I'm, we're coming back across the pond. Yeah. And we're going up to Fargo, North Dakota. Fargo. Fargo, North Dakota. I don't know how to talk like those people. I don't know. I don't know. It just sounds like I'm... It all sounds like Minnesota to me. Minnesota. Yeah, Fargo. Fargo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Fargo. I don't Okay, so we got 49-year-old dentist. I know, I'm on a theme, right? Because uh, my last guy was... Um, he was a pathologist. He was a pathologist, but I'm on that whole doctor, you know, single dude. Okay. Situation. Anyway, so 49-year-old dentist Philip Gat Gattuso. Oh, here goes the language. I, mean, I know. The, Sorry. Yeah, people just have normal names. I mean, not like we do. Yeah, and here's something really weird. I went, um, I, I researched this murder, and then I watched, there was a show on uh, See No Evil from ID Discovery did this murder as well, but they... That all of the names were different. So I was like, God, what, what names am I Which one is yours? Right? Who, who is it? Um, so I took the names from the newspaper articles. That's probably the right one. As opposed to... They the, probably changed the names to protect the not-so-innocent. Yeah, I don't know. Evil. It was weird. Evil doers or whatever it weird, was. Weird, weird. All right, so Philip is getting his three-year-old daughter, Kennedy, ready for school. Um, and Kennedy and Philip are really close. They had recently suffered the loss of Kennedy's mother, Philip's wife, Valerie, Aww. who died from complications after heart surgery mm. and had been just seven months. So fresh, oh, right? Fresh, yeah. Philip was really focused on raising Kennedy and making a good life for her. He even started scaling back on his hours at his dental practice. On the morning of October 26, 2009, Philip drops Kennedy off at daycare and heads home for a 10 a.m. conference call. So he's like, you know, I can imagine all the getting ready, the hustle and bustle of trying to get your three-year-old out the yes. door by yourself. Well, they and, absolutely do not want to put on yeah. anything that you've picked out, and yet the outfit that they want to wear will have you arrested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, never mind the hair and the teeth and everything oh, yeah. else. That's the, so, uh, that's the time I'm going to go get it. You keep talking. So he's rushing home for a 10 a.m. conference call. So the day progresses, and at daycare pickup time, Philip plays a no-show. He, you have to hit the timer button. You see it? Just there you the go. Buttons. You got it. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to take this out, too. You do. Don't mm -hmm. just turn the timer off and actually remove the yeah, tray. Yeah, I've done that before. So, um, okay, so the day progresses... And at daycare pickup time, Philip is a no-show. No Philip. Nobody at daycare can reach him, so they call his emergency contact. Her name is Julie Willard. Julie is a family friend, and she um, picks, goes and picks Kennedy up from the daycare. She takes her back to her house, gets her settled, and then she says, I'm going to go check on Philip at his condo, make you know, to see if he's there, try to figure out what the heck is going on. So she gets over to Philip's condo, and she walks to the garage, and she peeks in the window, and she notices his Porsche is gone. Hmm. She's thinking, hmm, he must not be home. So then she says, I'm going to walk around back, and 
Um, when I say walk around back, I mean she climbed the fence to get oh, to the back. You've got Julie. Julie is a very dedicated friend. She's dedicated. I'm I love that you, about her. Philip picked the right emergency contact. Good for you, Jules. So luckily the side door to the garage is unlocked. So Julie walks in and then she walks into Philip's condo. Immediately she knows that there's been trouble. Because there's broken glass on the floor, some chairs have been knocked over, and there's some small drops of blood on the floor. Which all could happen while trying to get your three-year-old. It could. It could be very well. Yes. Just yes. saying. Well, bless her heart. That Julie, <laughs> she's not giving up. So she's like, okay, I'm going to check upstairs. I personally, not the best emergency contact. I would have left immediately and called 911. Okay, me, this is what <laughs> happened to me. I would get so scared that I would pee all over the evidence <laughs> and then have a lot of explaining to do. Right. <laughs> I'd be like, oh god, I was so scared. I got, I got a nervous, I got a nervous bladder and a TT on the evidence. Oh my gosh, I can just imagine <laughs> Julie. She's scaled the fence, you know. She's yeah. going upstairs. She's a toughie. She is emergency. She might be my emergency. I know. Can we, have, can we both share her as our emergency contact? Julie, we need you in our lives. So uh, she's calling for Philip, but the condo is dead silent. Again, out I would go. Julie makes it upstairs and opens the door to Philip's bedroom, and she finds Philip face down on the floor and a halo of blood. Then he's not moving. Well, that did it for poor Julie. She was she like, like, now I'm I got to get him. Now I'm out. out. This is my line. She runs out and she calls 911. And the EMTs get there. They confirm that Philip is, in fact, dead. And by 8 o'clock, the first investigators are coming through Philip's condo for clues that might explain what happened. And the vibe they get was that this was a robbery gone bad because the condo was in complete disarray. Every single electronic anything had been taken. Oh. The jewelry was taken. Anything in the condo that had any kind of value was gone, including that $20,000 Porsche from the garage. Um, it was only $20,000 car? Yeah, it was a $20,000 car. Must have been used. Like, way used. Yeah. Okay, try not to judge. Listen, it's a Porsche. That's true. It's very true. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure the insurance on a loan is $20,000. <laughs> um, and maybe the news article got, got it wrong. Maybe they valued it, you know. Maybe they undervalued. Undervalued. They got the to blue protect the innocent. Right. <laughs> the blue <book> value. <laughs> But didn't account for all of the upgrades, you know. Uh, the bells because it was a, it, it, I think it had a it had a black top. I'm not sure if it was convertible or not. But um, so anyway, there's no sign of forced entry. So the investigators are thinking maybe this mate was somebody that Philip knew, but they still have a lot of work to do. So detectives call Philip's family and they call Philip's in-laws, which would be his wife Valerie's parents. Mm. They live in Oklahoma. And they notify. Oh, Oklahoma! <laughs> <laughs> I just have to say that. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> uh, so, Gene and Sharon, Kirkpatrick, mm. that's their name. It's good. I got them. Mm, yummy. Mm. Gene and Sharon Kirkpatrick are the in laws, and they are devastated. After all, it's only been seven months since they buried their daughter, Valerie, and now poor little Kennedy is an orphan. So, Jean and Sharon tell the police, okay, we're coming, but it's going to take us 24 hours to make it. Excuse it's me? 900 miles. They lived in Oklahoma. They're going to drive? I guess they decided they were going to drive. They opted to not fly. Maybe well, they were not. If it were day. me, if it were me, I wouldn't have the money together. I'd be like, I can't, I can fly halfway, but can y'all meet me halfway? Right. <laughs> can you just stick around a plane? Yeah, I mean, I got, yeah, I'm gonna have to run a no. car. This is gonna take me a while. No, no. And I haven't done any laundry, so you're gonna have to give me an extra day of laundry. <laughs> yes, time. yeah, no, it's I'll see you in a week. Again, not a good emergency contact. No, mm -mm. no. <laughs> so, um, they're like, okay, well, you know, Julie has volunteered to take care of Kennedy. Which is great. Otherwise, she would have been turned over to family. And Services, she's well right? protected because Julie's a badass. Julie didn't let anybody <laughs> come into her house. No, she's no. like, oh, heck no. That will scale a fence to chase her ass out. Right. So the police start to investigate Philip's death. They know he was a good businessman. He appeared to be a good father. And he had no criminal past. So, you oh. know, nothing shady. 
They start canvassing the neighborhood to see if anyone has seen anything suspicious during the day. You know how they do. Um, they know that Philip dropped Kennedy off at daycare at 8. It would have taken him approximately 15 minutes to get home. So they figure um, he was killed somewhere between like 8.15 and 10.30. So they're asking the neighbors, you know, did you see anything weird? They start to look and see if there are any cameras on any of the buildings around. And they find a bowling alley across the street from Phillip's condo. Mm -hmm. And by golly, they've got surveillance cameras on the outside of that building. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) my <laughs> Looks like mistletoe and holly. Oh my! <laughs> oh my! Oh, I love this bourbon. <laughs> I would love that. That makes me sing like a songbird. Woo. So they go in and ask the owner if they can take a look at that surveillance, so they can see, you know, the exact time that Philip's Porsche maybe comes into view. See if anything weird happens. You know, maybe they'll see somebody going in or or leaving. So, at around 7.30, they can see a truck with a trailer attached to it pull into the parking lot of bowling alley. And then it just sits. The Mm -hmm. owner remembers when he was out cleaning the parking lot, getting the trash and stuff up, that the the trailer had Oklahoma tags on them. So, detectives are like, hmm, interesting, Oklahoma. 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 So the detectives keep watching the video, and they can't make out the tag plate numbers. But at 747, they see somebody exit the truck, click the lock button, which then causes the lights to blink. Mm -hmm. And that person walks toward Phillip's condo. Mm -hmm. Detectives really need to get the license plate number so they can figure out who this person is. So they check around some other businesses and they find an A and W restaurant, which I'm not really familiar. With. I know yeah, I've yeah. seen them. But there was one that? in Southern Maryland. What does that A and W restaurant serve? Like diner food. Okay. Yeah, it's like fast food diner food, like Dairy Queen kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess I never really thought about it much because I don't like A&W root beer. I don't like root beer. I don't either. So just A&W is like, not, uh-uh. yeah, no, it's fine. You could eat there. They, really? they have other things besides root beer. I don't think so. And they don't I, cook everything in root beer. I'm not going to risk it. I'm just well, not going to risk it. it. So uh, they check that with that owner. I don't know, it's probably just the manager. I dare say it was the owner. And they are able to get a clear view of a person walking across. Unfortunately, the way the camera is tilted, they only see legs. They oh, just see some no. legs. But they do see the legs go to the condo. So they know whoever has that truck at 747 has gone over to Phillip's condo. She's got legs. She knows how to use them. Get it? Because they were I walking. I do. I do. They saw them using their legs. Yeah. yeah. Clearly. Okay. So... They keep watching the video, they see the legs walking, and then they keep thinking, we, we have to have more. We, you know, this isn't enough. We don't we can't know. can't convict somebody just on their legs? I guess not. Not, <laughs> in, not in America. Excuse me, sir. Are these your legs? Are these your legs? Don't lie to me. Line up. I want to line up. I want to see everybody's legs right now. And then you got to turn around and you got to walk this way. <laughs> walk past that walk dumpster. Walk this way. <laughs> <laughs> so Gene and Sharon finally get to, to Fargo to pick up little Kennedy. Fargo. Um, he had, they actually stopped off at Julie's house and said, we're here to get Kennedy. And she said, well, I think that you need to go talk to the police. They've got some questions for you. So, so I ain't giving you Kennedy until you go answer some questions. Right. So... Jean and let Sharon. me just remind you, I am a badass. Right. Jean, Sharon, Julie, and Kennedy all go to the oh, police station. It's a field trip. Right. <laughs> and while they're there, uh, the investigators asked Jean if Philip had any enemies in North Dakota or in Oklahoma. Jean says he can't think of anything, but he does mention that Philip was really big into poker. He was like a gambler. He's, come on. A poker face. (laughs) 
I, I couldn't think of it. Oh, I was like, come on. All I could do was see the poker dogs. And uh, there was no song. No. Uh-uh. So Philip was an avid gambler. True to true. They, okay. The police tracked down his gambling buddies, but they don't find anything out from him because he wasn't like a a gambling addict or irresponsible. Yeah, a bunch of money. No, and, no. 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 Dead end. As they watch some of the video from that bowling alley parking lot they keep going and they see Phillips Porsche drive through they see him pull into the garage at his condo and then at 11.35 they see that freaking truck from the bowling alley drive by with the Porsche on the trailer what? yeah so they missed the part where they got the Porsche onto the trailer. They didn't see. They didn't. That wasn't there. That bit wasn't on the video. I'll be damned. Yeah, they didn't see in the video the truck leaving to go and get it. There was like a little blip that happened in mm-hmm. the video surveillance, so it, it just didn't pick up. I know, cray cray, right? So they decide the best thing that they can do is to release a description to the media of the truck and the trailer and a description of Phillip's car just to see if anybody yeah. saw it, you know? Mm-hmm. Maybe they'd get a hit. Well, two hours after they released the info to the media, they got a call from a person that had been at a rest stop in South Dakota. South Dakota. <laughs> South Dakota. I wonder if it's hotter there than North Dakota. I think so. Tropical, mm-hmm. you know? Tro- very yeah. tropical in I'm South I'm sure they have beaches. <laughs> <laughs> The beach is right in the middle of the state. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Absolutely. beaches. Yes. Yeah, it's so close to the water mm-hmm. there. <laughs> Where do you live? Fargo. Fargo. Where do you vacation? South, South Dakota. Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> so the car, uh, the person had seen the, the truck and with the Porsche. The, he said that the car was covered with a tarp, but while the driver of the truck wasn't looking, the person lifted <gasps> the tarp and saw that it was a silver Porsche. Can we want to see what's under there? I don't know. Can you imagine? I can't imagine going to a rest stop and seeing a car on the back. at the peekaboo! And I'm like, going <laughs> to take the initiative or, I don't know. Some just, people are car fanatics, though. Oh, my God. And Enough they, that you would just lift the tarp? Yes, they're not looking like already the skirt. Tarp. They're lifting a the tarp on It seems the very invasive. Well, don't sh- look at my things. They're not for you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> don't lift anything. This is uncharted territory. <laughs> Please go. <laughs> so the police drive, drive on over to the rest stop in South Dakota, and they pull the video surveillance. Awesome. Well, they start looking at the video, and at around 1140 in the morning, they see that truck pull in. Hot damn. Yes. Hopefully they can see the torso now. <laughs> they got more than legs. They oh, got more than so legs. Excited. The dude driving the truck walks toward the bathrooms, and then they get a clear picture of the driver. Even better, they are able to get the video surveillance from inside the rest stop. Nice. You know those, those rest stops on the interstate, they are, like, covered in cameras. Well, that needs to be, because some squirrely it's shit happens scary, at those super places. Super scary place. Yeah. yeah. They get a, and it's color. Mm, God damn. Oh, yeah, they got a lot of money to spend on those places in South Dakota. South Dakota. It's because of all the revenue that tropical beaches bring in <laughs> from the tourists. <laughs> yes, it's a tourist. Yeah. <laughs> so they get a really clear image of the dude, and he's carrying a black garbage bag, um, and they notice he's got a weird stain on his jeans. And then he disappears, and then a few minutes later, he reappears, but he's wearing different clothes. Um, they switch back to the parking lot, and they see the truck leave the parking lot. So then they find another surveillance camera, and they can now see the license plate yes. and a sticker on the trailer, which would indicate that the trailer had been rented Okay, at U-Haul. Dun, oh, dun, dun, my dun. God, I knew it. It was U-Haul. U-Haul is always involved. <laughs> <laughs> and because they're... Investigation has now crossed state lines. They have to get the state investigators involved, which mm-hmm. can sometimes be good. Mm-hmm. So the state investigators reach out to the U-Haul company, and they found out that the person had rented the trailer three days before Phillip's murder. The guy that rented the trailer's name is Michael 
Not the Buble. Buble. It's Michael Buble. I How did you know? Uh, I was, I'm a super sleuth. No, Michael Nakbenda. Now, mm -hmm. on the show I watched, they called him Nick, but they didn't indicate in the newspaper or magazine articles anybody calling him Nick. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, so, he was a handyman with mm -hmm. a very nasty criminal record. Oh. He had, like, been in all kinds of trouble. I don't like it. So, they get themselves a little search warrant, and they head over to Michael's house. They have a searchy poo. And they search that house from top to bottom. 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 To bottom. <laughs> bo bo bottom. Bottom. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the South Dakota accent. <laughs> I don't know. Either. And they find no evidence of stolen property and no sign of Philip's car. But they do find Michael and arrest him. I want to call him Nick now. Don't call him Nick. It's not as Michael. Michael. They find him and they arrest him. Okay. There's a lot of media coverage about the shakedown. And that, shake, 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 that got shake, the attention shake, shake, of a guy. Shake your booty. Shake, shake your booty. booty. So that got the attention of a guy that called and told police that he had rented Michael a storage unit recently. <gasps> That's where that Porsche is. So police head to the storage unit and they strike gold because everything that was stolen from Philip's house, including the Porsche, was inside that dang storage unit. And where was this storage unit located? Oklahoma. Okay. They're, we're in Oklahoma now. Oh, Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so okay. now we're in Oklahoma. We're out of the Dakotas. Um, oh, and I don't remember if you heard me, or maybe I didn't say it. But well, if you didn't say it, I for sure didn't hear you. <laughs> yeah. I didn't hear you. Yeah. They had determined that Philip had been killed with a hammer. Oh, I didn't know To that. the back of the head. No. So mm -hmm. they, whoever it was, had hit him with the... The prongs, the, the tooth part of oh, the back. That's awful. In the head. That's just gives me the willies all over how painful that must I be. I know. Yeah, that's real bad. Oh, so mean. But and they rude. do find the hammer with the blood and some of Philip's hair on it in the floorboard of the Porsche. So dumbass didn't even get rid of it. Michael. He yeah, had a couple of days. days. He, he couldn't just like, do something. Storage rental? Great. Yeah. And it goes. Yeah. And so wait for it. Shove it in the house. And go, yeah. He just go rents a storage unit and puts everything in it. Yeah. House clean. So they test just in case the the blood in the hair on the hammer and it is in fact Phillips. Oh, Phil. But they still don't know what the connection is. Oh, like, I do. They don't know. They don't know what the connection is. Okay. Now, at one point, Philip did live in Oklahoma. He right. had his dental practice in Oklahoma, and mm -hmm. I don't know why they decided to move to North Dakota. The weather? Hello? Oh, right. Yes. Oh, gosh. Yes. Well, no tornadoes, right? I don't know that North Dakota never has a tornado. I don't think they probably have many. Why? They're not well, in Tornado Alley. Well, we're not either, but we have them sometimes. But they're moving from Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah, I think they have a lot of tornadoes. So you think that they're leaving Oklahoma and going to North Dakota I because would. of the tornado action? I would. The tornado Same activity. reason I would not live in Florida, because of all the lightning. That's Duh. There's a lot of lightning in Florida. Yeah. And a lot of bugs the and lightning, lot of snakes. No, lightning state. Out. No, not living in Florida. Or Audi. No, no. So we're going there for Thanksgiving. <laughs> But I'll go for a visit okay. at Thanksgiving okay. when there's not going to be a lot of lightning. <laughs> we've, we've ordered no lightning no lightning. Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. So they got to try and figure out what the connection is. So they go back to Michael's house. Michael lives with his mama. Bless her heart. And she's, like, hooked up to oxygen. Oh, my and she's God. Like, She's probably yeah, like sitting in a lazy and chair and she's surrounded by old newspapers oh, and God. she probably got like cobwebs growing on her and did. taking care of her. No, I don't know. No. Mm -hmm. No. So they go back and they ask her some questions and in during the conversation she mentions that Michael is the handyman for none other than Philip's father in law, Jean Kirkpatrick. Oh Jean. Damn it, Jean. Oh Jeannie. Oh, we're coming for you, old man. big truck. So they bring old mean Jean down to the station. <laughs> mean and ask Jean the dancing machine. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you something. Jean, 
He didn't hide anything. Oh. No. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. He straight up told investigators that he didn't think Phillips, Philip was fit to raise Kennedy. And he was determined to get Kennedy, to get custody of Kennedy, which they had tried to get after Valerie had passed away. They're and, awful. I know. Awful. And he told police that he thought Kennedy's welfare was more valuable than Philip's life. Oh, he thinks he's all puffed up and justified? Right. Right. Oh, my gosh. She's like, this man is a terrible man. So, I mean, you know, think about it. I got I got Adam killed. How else am I going to get Kennedy to safety? What a wrong Like, she was being abused. Bitch. Oh, my Lord. Now she's got nobody. So. She got nobody and she got no grandparents. That's right. Because they're assholes now. Yeah. Well, I hope Julie's got her. Well, Jean had given Nick $3,000 cash for travel expenses and told him that he could have all the valuables, including the Porsche and Phillips Score. condo. Score. So he's like, $3,000 travel? I'm going to mm -hmm. rent me a trailer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go get me a Porsche. I'm going to go get me a Porsche and some electronics and some jewelry that, that I, by the way, screen. cannot sell anywhere because it's all stolen. my mama wanted. Yeah. I'm getting it. Mama's getting it. I'm getting it. it. Mama's getting some jewelry. Yeah. So they convict... Um... Michael. Oh, Michael. Michael. Michael is 49. Michael is convicted of first degree murder, robbery, burglary, yeah. and theft. Yes. Yeah. I like got that it. circle. He gets life in prison without the possibility of parole. Good for him. Yeah. Where's the Porsche? Mama's driving in her mouth. She don't need oxygen Porsche. anymore. 63 year old Jean Kirkpatrick is convicted oh, of Jean. conspiring to commit murder. He also gets life in prison without the possibility of parole. Good. Sharon. I know she's up in it. I know she is. <laughs> Sharon is not charged with anything. Are you crapping the kitchen sink? But as Gene is carted off to his new home into prison, Sharon takes a stand in front of reporters and she takes one last shot at Philip, saying he was no angel and he, she even called him the Prince of Darkness. <gasps> As if to justify her husband hiring somebody to murder him. Who has that baby? Good news. Okay. Because if Sharon has that baby, <laughs> I'm going to go snatch that kid right out from under her. Like, we're heading to Oklahoma. <laughs> right. Oklahoma. Right. No. Uh, there is a restraining order, oh. a permanent restraining order against the Kirkpatricks. There you go. So you they sons can never, of bitches. never have any contact at all with Kennedy. Never. Any she contact. should never know about Zero. them. None. Mm. Zilch. Zero. Philip's um, sister okay. has Kennedy and raising her mm -hmm. in Louisiana. Oh my gosh, a whole new state. I know. And the weather is a lot warmer. Yeah, and she's wonderful. And on her behalf, Philip's family filed a civil lawsuit against the Kirkpatricks and won like. Nine point four seven million dollars. <laughs> I get it, sure. And then they went in, and um, though Sharon and Jean tried to contest Philip's will to get his money, what? there was a three point four million dollar estate that Philip had. Yeah, and all of that. They thought it should go to them. That was actually split between Kennedy and his siblings, which is what he had wanted. Yeah, but yeah. They tried to get his money. Yeah. They're awful people. Yes. Awful. Let's go pay Sharon a visit. Oh Where does God. she live? Because I'm going to go have some pretend tea with her. I'm guessing she's still in Oklahoma. I don't know. Well, I tell you what, we need to find her. I don't know. Sharon Kirkpatrick? Kirkpatrick. Sharon Kirkpatrick. Sharon? Sharon? If anybody knows Sharon Kirkpatrick, let us know her address. Because I'd like to stop by. I hope you're not I a friend. I hope you've given yourself you, to the Lord, lady. And I'll tell you what, if you're a friend, you need to unfriend her right now. Yeah, that's not that's not nice. That's, that's not fun. nice. I'm going to go on Facebook her. I can tell you that this one struck a nerve for me, not because of all the murder and everything, but because some freaking grandparents thought they knew better. That they know better and that they can have rights. When my child was young, his grandmother, let's call her the Grand Monster. The Grand Monster 
tried to take me to court to get unsupervised visitation with him because... She didn't try to take you to court. She took she you took to court. She took me to court. Took me to court. Expensive. And it cost me a lot of money to hire an attorney. That you didn't attorney. have as a single mother with a deadbeat ex that right. did not pay you a penny in child no support. No child support. And an infant. Right. Thank God I had an employer who helped me tremendously during that time. And I was able to afford a good attorney. And we went to court. And the judge looked at her at the end of our court, and she said to the Grand Monster, not only are you not getting unsupervised visitation, I'm going to tell you to walk away from this child right now. I remember her saying, I can't think of anything positive you bring to this kid's life. That's right. That is right. Yes. Get out. She said, out. you get fuck out. You get Fuck out. That's right. Sorry, Mama. Sorry, Mama. It was Anne. Oh, well, it's the bourbon, for heaven's sake. It's the bourbon talking. We get a little salty when we drink. It makes my tongue all slippery. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> I can't all right, them the so words. let's taste ourselves oh, a little cheese wafer. Yes, I will get them. Uh, a butter cheese wafer. Oh, my God. They smell delicious when I took They them are. Out. They, they do. It smells like I'm cooking up goldfish. Um, do you have any kind of a plate? Do you need a plate? I mean, no. I mean, don't dirty my stuff, then I just got to do dishes. I was thinking maybe you would have a... Well, I do have a paper plate, but it is way bigger. These things are tiny. As a matter of fact, I was told to, do, to roll it the size of a golf ball and then flatten it out. I actually did it more of a marble. Yeah. Um, yeah, I brought you two. Because the golf ball seemed a little, seem a little, a little large. All right, here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. taste them. Now that my bourbon's gone, I'm going to have my cocktail <laughs> snack. Mm, oh, that's yeah. so good. Mm, I love the rice cooking in them. That's yeah. a nice crunch to it, right? Because you mm. don't get real crisp, you know, with just flour. Yeah, it would be too butter, floury, right. too crackery. Right. So you get that nice little crispness with the Rice Krispies. And the Rice Krispies have a toasted flavor. They do. It's so yummy. Sugar. Delicious. You did a grand job. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you. Well, cheers to you, Sugar. Cheers to both of us. I'm so glad I'm living right upstairs from you now. Girl, it's so convenient. So I convenient. Yes. So, y'all remember where to find us. Mm-hmm. And stay sweet. And have a great week. And we love y'all. We do. We right. love y'all. Bye now. Bye. Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube.